one, but the technique is the same. I, I have an AR-15. I figured I would show people how to pull the bolt out of that and disassemble the bolt and clean it and get into some of the, uh, the problem areas. And then I have an old um, Marlin 3030 from about 1941 that uh, is a little different. And um, it will kind of, I'll show you the wood and then what I'll, I'll go into uh, how I keep the wood uh, looking good and preserve it. So anyway, without further ado, let's go Scott, ahead and get, yeah. Scott, one, one thing, I forgot to click record. I've clicked record about halfway through it. So again, welcome to the LGC Social Distance Learning inaugural event. Scott Richardson is gonna tell us how to take apart some guns um, and he'll, uh, I'm not gonna make him do the intro over again because I was an idiot. So back to you, sorry boss. Okay, well, it's good timing because we're just getting started. So I figure uh, a lot of people start off uh, buying Glocks. No reason not to. They're fantastic weapons. Uh, they're they're sort of the Toyota Camry of guns. They just work. You um, so if you started with a Glock, you made a good choice. Um, I also have a Sig Sauer and a 1911 that are are uh, different variations of semi-automatic guns, and I have a Ruger GP100 for the revolver carriers out there to show you guys. So anyway, I'm going to start with the Glock. Is the first most important thing for me is the gun is unloaded. You know, there is there's no ammo in it. The magazine is empty. There is no mag in it, and I have no live ammo on my bench or you know near me. Uh, that's a standing rule with me. I don't want a box of nine millimeter. Uh, if anything, maybe a snap cap to test fire something, but I don't, I don't have live ammo on the bench. There's no reason to, and it's just going to make problems. So, and I always keep that muzzle pointed in a safe direction. There's nobody straight in front of me. So anyway, we start with an empty gun and with a Glock, you drop the slide. And then this, this I, I don't like guns where you have to pull the trigger to disassemble them, but that's just the way Glock is. So I pull the trigger and here's the, the technique. You put your thumb up under this beaver tail. I don't know if that's coming through on camera very clearly, but you just shove it up under that beaver tail, wrap your fingers around the top and pull your fingers back just about a quarter of an inch. And you'll see these tabs, there's one on each side. You just pull down and let go. Now the slide comes right off, okay? That's the most complicated part about stripping a Glock. From there, you would just push slightly forward on the recoil spring and guide rod, or I mean the guide rod spring and rod, take it out. The barrel just flips up and out, okay? That's the majority of the disassembly you're going to have to do on a Glock to clean one. This one's been pretty clean, so I'm not going to clean it. I'm going to clean my 320. Um, but that's how you would take one apart. And then, you know, you would go through, and I can show you a little bit further, uh, importantly on a Glock. I don't know if this is coming through on video. You'll see a little black channel right here, a little lip. Um, what you want to do is take a, a screwdriver or something small and just press on it. And you'll feel it. It's slightly spring loaded. From there, you can put your thumb over the back plate here, this plate. And keeping your thumb covering that, slide back just slightly. Cover it, slide the back plate off, the slide plate off. Okay, that's removed. Now you can remove your stri striker assembly. Okay, that's the striker. This is the part that actually impacts the, uh, the primer on the, the weapon. And then from there, the thing with a Glock in most striker fired guns is you do not lubricate the striker. A lot of people, uh, you know, used to older firearms, uh, slather everything in grease or lube, and uh, you don't want to do that with a Glock. You leave this dry. This needs to run dry. If you get uh, too much lubrication in there, a little bit will get in there uh, just over time but it will attract carbon and grease and it won't function properly. You'll get light, light primer strikes and um, you know, it, can get, it can cause the gun to malfunction. So I usually pop these out and I will clean them. You know, I'll take a, a, I like to use these nylon brushes a lot. They don't mar anything and they're good for getting into really tight spaces. You hey, know, Scott, we had a question if you could show the back plate removal. Sure. Easy to show again. Yeah, I'll put it right back together and show you one more time. 
And then I'll explain how to reassemble it. That's half the fun. Okay, so you start with your slide in this state right here. This is the way it comes off the gun after you've removed the, the guide rod and the barrel. And you'll see, I don't know if this is coming through on camera, but below this assembly right here, you'll see a little black kind of a ledge in there. That's if the- Pull it a little closer to the camera, I can almost see it on mine. Yeah, yep, right in here. I got it. Yeah, so I'm gonna just put the screwdriver in there and I'm just gonna pull down just a tiny bit it's because it's it, we're counteracting that spring that's in there. So I'm gonna push down on that. And then I'm gonna take my thumb and push back on the, the plate here. I'm trying to get this in, oh, there we go. And that's why you keep your thumb over it. That spring will pop out. Okay, this is uh, what holds your extractor. But anyway, that's it, That's that's all there is to it. But as I was saying, um, you know, keep this clean. Uh, you can, if you want to spray it down with something that, that dries quickly. Uh, I was saying in, before the intro when we were just online, I, if you can find a non-chlorinated brake cleaner, uh, that stuff works great for cleaning things like this. It'll get all that oil off and it won't leave a residue. Um, I don't like to use it indoors and I don't have any non-chlorinated -chlor uh, cleaner with me, so I'm not going to demonstrate the, this process, but ballastol works well, but it leaves an oily film, so you'll have to clean up after it. But anyway, dry. You want to inspect in here, make sure there's no, you know, uh, unburnt powder, carbon, or anything built up. Uh, I, we can In another class, I'm going to go into upgrading and modifying guns and I'll show you how to change these springs out and modify some of this stuff, but that's kind of beyond the scope today. So to reassemble this, oh, and you might want to come down there with a patch and maybe a 22, uh, you know, cleaning rod and patch and kind of clean down in there and dry it, dry it really well. Um, you, you don't want a bunch of oil and grease and gunk in there because it will malfunction. So to reassemble this, if this comes out, it's not a big deal. You see the spring in goes in to that little, little uh, hole right there, just drops straight in. You put your striker right back in the channel. It will only fit one way. You know, it, you, you flat just can't do it. You know, that it just won't go back together. So you can't make, you can't make a mistake here. It, it, it's pretty foolproof. So that just slides right back into place. So what we need to do now is push down on this liner just slightly with your thumb, enough to hold for the plate to slide back over it and hold it in place. See now it's holding that spring tension down. What I'm gonna do is take my screwdriver and press on this little detent here and then push the back plate home and that's it. That's reassembled and ready to go. So that's it for, a, that's all that you should ever need, really need to do on a Glock. Um, you know, that's even really beyond just a straight field strip and clean. Uh, but I like to do it because it's fairly straightforward and fairly simple. And, um, uh, but once again, like I said, in a future class, we'll go over upgrading some of this stuff. On the uh, lower end of the Glock, you have, you know, your trigger assembly here and your rails. And you also have I don't know if that shows, but that's what you're pulling down on when you're releasing. That's the thing that holds the slide, retains the slide. You can There's a little spring under there and that's what's holding it in place. So you're just relieving the tension on that spring. But I get in there with patches and I clean that and a fantastic tool. If you can find a set, uh, pick them up at Harbor Freight or uh, anywhere you, cheap uh, tools are sold are dental picks. These things are fantastic for getting into some of those tight areas. I just use a, a patch and you can kind of get down in there and you just kind of tuck them in. You're not gonna hurt anything. There's nothing in here that's gonna come flying out. You're not gonna mess anything up. You know, they, they're, they work really well for that. See, that even pulled some more gunk out of there. Um, you know, you can use them to scrape carbon off of uh, areas where they, where it tends to gather you know, some of these things. 
so dental to, uh, dental picks are fantastic. There's also a mirror sometimes if you wanted to see, you know, something that you can't see readily. They're they're very handy for that. So I use dental picks a lot cleaning guns, um, and they're cheap. A set of Harbor Freight dental picks is, you know, a couple of bucks, uh, and they're invaluable. But for lubricating a Glock, all you need to do, you see the grease right here at the beginning of the rails? You just take your, I use Lucas grease. Uh, any gun grease will do. You, you don't need a lot of it. This tube will last you forever. Um, you just take a little dab and you put a little bit right, whoops, right there, a little bit right there, right there. And right there. Reassemble your gun. You put the channels right. This just threads these little notches here correspond to these channels. So it just slides right together. Oh, I gotta put the I forgot I gotta put the barrel back in. Dope. Hold on just one second. If you get if you do this to yourself and you can't get the slide off just re-release this striker again. And it'll come right apart. So you got to see a, a rookie move there. Sorry for the confusion. But it'll allow me to re-demonstrate how to put this back together. So once again, I'm pressing down on that sleeve. I'm gonna press down that detent. Slide that into place. So if you want to Gucci your Glock, a lot of aftermarket companies make these custom uh, plates for these slides. So to reassemble this piece, your barrel, uh, I should go over cleaning this barrel. I'm gonna clean a gun for you, but um, you wanna make sure these surfaces right here are nice and clean. Right here is your feed ramp. When you hear feed ramp, that's what that is. The, the bullet is coming up from the magazine and feeding right onto that ramp. Uh, when people talk about polishing a feed ramp, that's what they're doing. They're taking a Dremel tool and uh, using a, a product like Flitz, or another metal polish um, and polishing that until it's mirror smooth. Uh, it's usually not necessary on a Glock. You usually see it done on a 1911. Um, most of the time it's unnecessary, but people like to do it and they like to brag about it. That's what they're talking about. Just polishing that feed ramp. I, a question when I, from the audience. Yeah. Uh, lube on the trigger assembly? No, uh, you can put a couple of little drops but uh, Glock really doesn't recommend, they, they recommend running them dry for whatever reason. All there is in there is just, there's a little surface. Uh, I can pop the trigger assembly out if you guys want to see the whole thing. Uh, if you want to take a show of hands, who wants to see it? Um, it's not usually necessary to pull one apart unless you're changing the springs to lighten the trigger or things like that. Let's save that for the next class. Yeah, okay. So I put a little grease on my fingers and I just coat the barrel a slight bit with it. Right here, you can see a wear portion right there. That's not unusual. That's perfectly normal where the, the finish is worn off. So I just put a little grease on there. Not a lot. Drop the barrel, drop the barrel back in. This part goes out. It mates up to that orifice right there. This rear piece locks in to that lug right there and you'll feel it drop in. You just give it a little bit of a press forward and it'll drop right into the channel. So that's what it should look like. Okay. Then you just slide this all back together and it's good to go. Okay. And then to function check this, once again, I'm gonna double check that it's unloaded, pointed in a safe direction because I will be pulling the trigger. I pull the trigger, make sure it feels normal. I keep my finger on the trigger, re-rack it, let it slingshot, feel it reset, and then pull the trigger again. So that trigger is functioning properly. The gun appears to be functioning properly. 
take a magazine, you can take an empty magazine. The uh, slide lock is working properly. Once again, I'm gonna pull the trigger in a safe, with the gun pointed in a safe direction. Okay, that gun's function checked and it's working properly. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and take apart my SIG and actually clean it for you. First, I'd like to go over some of the tools that I use. I use Lucas Grease, where grease is called for. Uh, I love these Break Free CLP little needle um, bottles because you can get, CLP is a cleaner, a lubricant, uh, a cleaner and a lubricant and a protectant all in one product. Um, but I just like it because it has this little needle valve in there. So you can get into a really nice tight little space and just get a drop of oil instead of slathering, you know, a big, you know, something like this, which will, well, that's, that one's got a needle valve on it too, but a, a bigger applicator will put oil all over everything. This is Lucas oil. I use it a lot, but any gun oil will work for these purposes. This is a uh, Hoppy's gun oil, Remington oil, Rem oil works great. Uh, there's no, there's no wrong answer to what lubricants to use on your gun, except w, I don't recommend WD-40 uh, or things like that because WD-40 isn't a lubricant. It's a water displacement uh, product. So, quick, you know, quick question before you move on to the SIG. A uh, question from Brian wants to know what Gen Glock that was because his rod and assembly look, rod spring and assembly looks different. Ah, okay. Well, this is a, uh, I believe it's a, a Gen 4 Glock 21. But it may be different, slightly different on the 21, but taking it apart will be exactly the same. Um, it should function exactly the same. And may, there are variations. Uh, people change springs out on them. People change guide rods on them. But the, the procedure is exactly the same. There shouldn't be anything different about that. Um, I like to use a nylon brush or a brass brush. Don't use a steel brush on a gun. Please don't. Uh, steel wool, don't use it. You know, you see people say, oh, you know, it's got a rusty barrel. Um, you know, just take some steel wool and oil to it. Don't do that. Go get some brass wool. Um, you know, get, get some nice fine brass wool and because brass is a sacrificial metal. It's softer than the steel. So it will bend, it will uh, um, be damaged long before you'll damage the steel on the gun. If you're taking steel wool to it or a wire wheel, uh, you're pretty much uh, removing steel with that thing. If it's deeply pitted rust, you may not have a chance, but in average daily gun maintenance, there's no reason to do it. These, these nylon brushes work fantastic. Brass brushes work great to remove uh, heavy caked on carbon and things like that. Uh, okay. Hammers sometimes are used to remove pins and, and uh, roll pins on some guns. I use brass and plastic hammers. I don't use a metal hammer, or I mean a steel hammer, case hardened steel. If you slip, this won't mar the steel. This will dent before the steel will. So once again, Harbor Freight, just go pick up a, a inexpensive brass and plastic hammer. This is a little tiny one used for smaller spaces, but you can see the amount of damage on there from striking uh, roll pin punches and things like that. But I would much rather den damage my hammer than damage a, uh, the side of a gun. Ballastol is a great product if you need to, and I'll show you where I use it when I, when I do the SIG. It, you can use this, to, it's the same as CLP. It's a cleaner, a lubricant, uh, and a, you know, a preservative and it penetrates. Um, Canned air is fantastic for blowing oil down into spaces that you can't get to. You can put a little drop of oil on something and just blow a little bit of canned air on it and it will force that oil down into some of the uh, surfaces that rub together on guns. Um, so I am a proponent of Hoppy's number nine. I've used it since I was a kid and it's fantastic. It always works and it just smells good to me. Uh, other people probably don't share my opinion. These little cleaning kits are fantastic for uh, whatever whatever uh, caliber firearm you have. This is 38 nine millimeter. So you have a couple of brass rods. You just assemble it as such. You have a cleaning patch attachment. Hey Scott, uh, two questions. Mm -hmm. well, sure. One question, one suggestion. Um, 
uh, question from the audience, uh, when to use grease versus oil, and two, <clears throat> it might be a good idea for us to put together a gun vent shopping list okay. for, for some of these, yeah. and you can sure. tell people what the tool is as we do it. That way we can get through uh, you betcha. the material. Okay, so this is the cleaning rod, screws right into here. And voila, fits in a range bag, super handy. I use these a lot. I have one for the 45 and one for nine millimeter. Fantastic, so let's clean the gun. Hold on just one second. All right, this is my SIG 320. I shot the heck out of this thing the other day. Once again, I'm checking it, no bullets, it's clear, pull the trigger, everything's good. So on these, if um, you're gonna wanna lock the slide back, push down on this lever like that, release your slide and it comes right off, okay? And you can see that's pretty dirty, that's pretty filthy in there. You know, just a lot of caked on carbon. This is very similar to a Glock. Most of these come apart the same way. Remove the spring. I use this pan, it's magnetic. Um, and I love it because little pins and springs and things don't run away from you. These cleaning mats are fantastic because parts don't bounce off of them. If you drop a little detent or a little spring, it doesn't bounce off into a low earth orbit. Liberal Gun Club sells one that's perfect for the pistol size. Um, well, there's, a, right, there's a rifle mat too. There's a rifle mat. Oh, Don't okay. Forget. There is totally a uh, rifle mat. I only have the pistol mat, but I oh, had we to, can this fix the that. Mat. All right. So you can see the the built up crud on this right here. You know the amount of cheese on there. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and clean this really quick. I'm going to pop my trigger group out because it's super simple on this gun. You just remove this lever here. Oh, and to answer the question, uh, I use grease on rails and like this, you know, these areas right here, anywhere where metal is, is rubbing together uh, quite a bit. Um, I use oil on um, other smaller springs and things like that. Um, but it, the tendency is to way overdo it. You don't really need a lot. Gun oils and grease will put up with a lot of temperature. Uh, and they, so anyway, that pops right out. You pull slightly forward on this trigger group. Let's see if we can do it on camera. Okay, pops right out. There's the frame. So this is a perfect use of ballastol. I'm gonna set these parts out of my way for demonstration here. So you can see the amount of just crud that's down in there, how greasy and cheesy that is. There's a lot of grease right there. I would just take my ballastol and spray it down. because it'll, it'll run down into all those areas. Let that soak, marinate for a minute. And then I'll do the barrel real quick. So starting off with a dirty barrel, I like to take a patch, just one simple patch. I'm gonna put it on my cleaning rod, like so. Take some hoppies. Just dip it, you don't need a lot. Just enough to get it a little bit wet. And you're always, if you can, you wanna clean a gun from the chamber side out. You know, because that way it's, it's, going, it's going to rotate with the rifling. If you come this way, it's going to, you're gonna be fighting that rifling and you can, uh, you know, if you do it too vigorously, you can mess things up. So I'm just gonna run the patch down there and I'm gonna get the inside of that barrel nice and soaked, okay? Come back through. I just want to make sure there's a nice good coating of hoppies in there. And I'm going to let the hoppies just sit for a minute and work its magic. So while that's doing its thing, I'm going to take a couple of patches, get them, get some hoppies on them. Just a tiny bit. I'm going to work on the frame. I'm going to get in here and I'm just going to clean off all of the accumulated crud. And here you'll see this little bit of carbon. This is a perfect application for a dental pick because it's plastic and you're not going to hurt anything, but it's just makes short work of scraping that stuff right off of there. Rather than have to scrub at it. 
So I get down in here and I, you just remove all of the visible uh, fouling that you can find. Once again, I'm taking the dental pick and I'm pushing it down into these areas right here. It just makes it a lot easier to get down in there and get that stuff out rather than just using the patch alone. So, okay, do it on this side. That hoppies just cuts right through that stuff. Um, there are, CLP does as well though. There's nothing wrong with CLP. Uh, there's a lot of excellent uh, gun cleaning products on the market. But I'm just going up and down these verticals. And I, I shoot about a thousand rounds a month or more through this gun. So some of these parts are just permanently darkened from a lot of abuse. But I'm just trying to remove as much of that fouling as I can. Scrub it down. You can even go so far as to use your nylon brush to really get into that. This nylon won't scratch a thing on a gun. If it does, you bought the wrong gun. Uh, so, you know, that's that's about as clean as I need it because I know I'm gonna run this gun pretty hard, but I got all of the visible caked on crud. I'm gonna take my slide and I'm gonna get another patch. And buy good patches, buy good quality cotton patches. Um, they're, they're uh, a little bit more expensive than the sort of uh, nylon or whatever, but they absorb a lot better. Um, so I'm going to take this and I'm going to get down in that channel right there. And I'm just going to pack it and use my, you can use a, a wood skewer for like a uh, shish kebab works fantastic for this as well if you don't have a dental pick. But to just get down into those areas, you see the amount of crud I'm pulling out of there. This area doesn't get nearly as dirty as, as uh, the trigger group and, and things like that. But let me get back out in here. You just wanna get that on all those surfaces. We'll come back over it with a, uh, I use a rag, a cotton rag to kind of remove as much of the residue as I can. But I like to let the solvent do its job and soak and uh, clean. And then I take the patch and I run it down the rails a little bit. I don't know if that's really showing on, showing up, but I get in there and it gets all of the old grease out. Okay. Try to show it this way. Get all that grease and crud out of that channel. And wipe down your slide really well. I'm going a little bit faster than normal in the interest of time uh, so that I can get through the material. But, you know, take as much time as you want. I actually enjoy cleaning guns. Uh, I'm odd that way. Um, but I actually enjoy the act of doing it. So, and then while you're doing this, you're inspecting the firearm for any kind of a crack or anything that strikes you as unusual, you'll look for like a little burr right here. You see that little dent right there. That doesn't worry me, but if I saw a little burr on one of these surfaces, I'd be concerned. Um, you know, like your, your ejectors and extractors. You know, you wanna look at these, make sure these, these can crack. So you wanna make sure that there's no uh, chips or cracks in this, okay? Um, you know, your firing pin, you know, it's coming out right here. You want to make sure this this face is nice and smooth because that's where the uh, the back of the 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 uh, bullet is resting. So you just want to clean that up, get that, make sure that's nice and clean. Okay. You know, and but like I said, take your time, inspect this stuff, look very carefully. Uh, these things, you know, bad things can happen if uh, parts, you know, certain parts fail. Um, so you want to be aware of it. Well, and, and you know, if an extractor breaks and you're in the middle of shooting a stage, you're done, you know, so you can, you can proactively, I've, I've seen it more on Glocks, but uh, you, you know, you identify a crack in that part and you're like, okay, I need to order one, take it apart and fix it before it gives you a problem. So I'll just hit this with a patch real quick to get some of the slipperiness out of it. 
Okay, so that's more or less, you know, it's not as clean as I would normally do it, but it gives you the idea of what I'm trying to achieve, which is to get in there and remove as much of that crud as I can. So my barrel's been soaking a little bit. I now take these patches off. Another reason I like these pans is I can just throw the used patches in there. I'm gonna take this piece off and I'm gonna take my brass brush. Once again, brass only, no steel, please. And once again, from the chamber side, I'm gonna run it through there. Okay, I'm gonna run it back and forth. And this will loosen up grime in those, in those uh, rifling grooves, lands and grooves in there. The, uh, the uh, hoppies should have broken the bond with the surface of the metal, and this will break it loose completely. So I run that through there several times, swap out. Run a patch. Like so. Okay. Thread that on there. I run patches through. Just keep going. See how much crud that's removing? I just I run a couple of clean patches through there. Get all that stuff off. And you will go through patches, lots and lots of patches. They also make boar snakes, which I don't have one on the bench, but it's a, it looks like a long shoelace with a little bit of brass on it. And you feed it, you drop it down through the barrel and pull it through. Uh, those are great for rifles and for field cleaning, but they really don't, I don't think they get it as clean as patches and just taking your time. Uh, but they, they're very effective if you're, you know, like on a hunting trip or someplace like that where the, where the gun's been exposed to moisture. Um, you know, it's a good way to get some oil on that surface and prevent rust. So I'm gonna do that a few times. You see it's coming back a little bit cleaner. But then you also inspect that barrel. I don't know if that's showing up. Is the, can you see the lands and grooves? On there? Almost, I can see that it's shiny. I can see that okay. it's shiny. Yeah, you don't see any chunks, you know, visible in there. Not that I can uh, see. You also want to inspect the crown uh, anytime you're working on a gun. This is the crown of the barrel. You want to look for chips and gouges and cracks. Um, you know, what happens is these, you know, these things will bang into stuff and it will really affect the accuracy of your gun if, these, if this portion of the barrel gets dented or cracked or I'm chipped more, more than anything. But you can get them recrowned. It's not the end of the barrel. It's just uh, you need to keep an eye on it. You know, you want to make sure that that's intact. Uh, it, it can really wreak havoc with rifles. Um, so now I'm going to grab a rag. Sorry, here. No. You guys still with me? We are just uh, all right. Real quick question, you know, as, uh -huh. as we go through as we go through this, um, maybe finish up the lower. Uh, okay. And uh, you know, we just want to keep people's sure. attention because we're forty minutes into it. Okay. All right. So anyway, the barrel's clean. I'm gonna reassemble. I'm gonna take a little bit of grease. Once again, just rub it on my fingers. Rub it on these surfaces. Get a little thin coat of grease on there. Drop it back into place. Guide rod goes just the same as it did on a Glock. Drop it in. Okay, that's done. Now with this, I'm gonna take my brass, or I, I mean, sorry, nylon brush, and I'm just gonna brush all those surfaces. This is a great use of a nylon brush. Okay, that's gonna free up all the crud. Get down in these spots. Okay. And then you can take patches or I just use like to use a lot of these rags, but you can see how much cleaner that is than it was when we took it out of the gun. And get down in all those spots. I would take a, uh, uh, a pick and some patches and get down in all these little cracks, uh, but I won't bore you with that. Once again, this is a perfect time to show the application of a pick. You see that little bit of carbon right there? 
Just dig that stuff off. It tends to gather in certain places on certain guns. So anyway, get down in there, get all that cleaned off. Okay. See how much cleaner that is than when we started? And that's not even a thorough job. That's just a, a quick, adequate job. Reassemble it, you just drop your trigger in first. Okay, it'll drop in like so. Okay, and then it, it comes back in, these two little rails lock into that spot. This is aligned properly. We just come back, put this through. Okay, get it aligned with the other side. It always takes longer when somebody's watching. Sorry. Okay. All right. And then when you reassemble a SIG, you want to make sure that see that surface right there is flat. If it's round, if it's like that, you're not going to get your slide back on. So I just turn it flat. Okay. Take your upper, just like we did with the Glock. Rotate that. Okay. Well, slide it like that. And then you just, I don't know if this is showing up on camera, flip that. We lost your sound, which means you probably knocked your headphones out. <laughs> Technical difficulties. I hear something now. You got me back? Well, I got you back. I got you so back. I'll finish up with the laptop mic. Okay. So anyway, the upper's back on. I'm going to function check it. Trigger pulls. Slingshot it. Check the reset. It reset. Okay. That's been function checked. I'm going to just give it a quick wipe. Okay. And set it aside. So that one's done. That's... I'm going to go ahead and lock the slide open so that anybody looking at that thing will know it's safe. All right. Hey, Scott, I want to make a, make a quick check. I, I want to sort of you know, keep note of the time. Uh, if you had to pick uh, what you could do in the next, say, 20, 25 minutes, which one would you do? The revolver? I'm going to clean an AR bowl real quick. There you go. That's I think, seems to be the popular uh, – Okay. The popular one. All uh, right. And we, uh, since everybody seems to be really into this, we'll schedule another one and you can do it for okay. revolvers. Well, good? I'll do an AR bolt real quick and just talk real quickly about uh, cleaning the rest of the rifle, but the bolt is really the critical component of that. Right. So I'll get right through it. And then we'll open it up for questions. All right. Excellent. Thank you, AR. sir. Once again, I don't know if you can see it, but I have a chamber flag in there. Magwell is empty. Okay. To get my chamber flag out, visually inspect it. I like to stick a finger in there. Okay, bolt goes forward. All right, so there's my AR, one of my AR 15s. So you start by pushing these takedown pins. There's two of them, front and back. I'm just going to do the uh, back one for this demonstration since we're just doing the bolt right now. On the other side of the weapon, you pull this pin right here, you just pull the rest of it out of the way. See how it drops open? Okay, there's your guts of your, your gun. Take your uh, charging handle, just pull it straight back, slide the bolt out, that's it. Okay, that's your charging handle. Now when cleaning the rest of this rifle, you wanna pay special attention to this chamber right here. See these lugs? These are the locking lugs. These go in there and they lock the bolt in place while the gun's firing. So you wanna look for carbon buildup in that area. The carbon builds up a lot on these guns in that area. ARs are filthy guns. They're fantastic, they're super reliable, but they, they run dirty and they run wet. They run really well with a lot of lubrication. So you can see mine's just dripping in, in oil. Uh, I just, I run them wet. But look, pay special attention to that area. Spend a lot of time with a, uh, a pick and uh, maybe a carbon scraper tool and clean that real well. So you want to clean out this channel and uh, you can run a cleaning rod from this end straight through down the bore. Okay. You don't want to run it from the muzzle device forward or back if you can. If you can get to it, always clean your gun from the chamber, chamber out. 
So anyway, I would run up uh, some patches and solvent through there. The lower doesn't require a whole lot. There's not a lot of lubrication in here. I put a couple of drops of oil on these hammer springs right here. There's, there's two pins right here and right here that hold your hammers assembly together. You can see the pins on the outside of the lower right here. I'm just lubricating where those, those springs ride over that pin. Okay, that's all I'm really doing and then I'm cleaning, making sure that I get all of the crud out of there and then I'm inspecting and I'm looking for any kind of damage to this hammer face uh, or any broken springs, anything that doesn't look right. Inspect these lugs carefully. A broken lug, you know, these, these lugs can break off. If they break off, you're gonna have to rebarrel the gun and it's a safety issue. So look very carefully at these. Take a light, shine it down in there, take some time. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this aside. But that's what I would do. It's no different than cleaning a handgun as far as, you know, the technique. But to take apart an AR bolt, comes out of the gun looking like this. And you see this, this is a little pin, a little cotter pin. So you want to remove that. I, you, you can use the tip of an AR bullet or anything to just get in there and pull that out. Like so. And uh, I would recommend that you keep a spare one of these in your range bag somewhere in a Ziploc bag because they can go missing very easily. Okay, from there, your firing pin comes right out. Okay, that's one dirty firing pin. Now, you take this and we're gonna pull the bolt out. So you see this locking cam? You wanna rotate it so it's parallel. The long ways is parallel with the rest of the bolt. And then you slide that right out. I don't know if this is gonna, it just pops straight up like so, like that. Now the bolt comes out. That's it to disassembling a uh, NAR bolt. For cleaning one of these, you're gonna go to town with some patches and brushes. But the biggest challenge on these is carbon building up right here on this face. You know, you can see it dried on carbon. I have a special scraper that, that is tapered to this, but you can see that carbon, that black dried on crud. That's what you're fighting on an AR a lot. Let me grab a patch real quick. and I'll just do a really quick cleaning of this. Um, the good news about ARs is they don't require cleaning every time you use the gun. You can run a thousand rounds through an AR and it will function just fine. Um, you know, I'm not saying you don't have to clean them, you know, clean them however you, often you want, but it's not critical like your grandpa's old hunting rifle that, you know, you have to clean every time you fire it. So I'm going to go ahead and just real quick, get all of the old dirt, grease, unburnt powder, other things. This is your bolt face right here. This is where your, your firing pin is coming through right there and impacting that primer. So you want to look here at your extractors and, and uh, ejectors. Get down in there and clean that bolt face. You know, get in there and make and look for any crud or build up. Uh, pick is really handy right here. So I just, or uh, where's my pick? Oh, well, I'll use the, just get in there and get all that stuff out of there. You know, that's a little bit cleaner now. Okay. So I just go through it, I clean and I clean and I clean. Okay, with this, we have a lot of crud built up on there. A lot of, like I said, I run them wet. So you're gonna see a whole lot of oils and, and uh, crud on my gun, on my ARs. Some guns don't run well wet, but AR-15s seem to really like it too. Take a bunch of patches and I'm going to run them down through here. Same way you would, you know, the bore of the rifle. You can use these things to do multiple jobs. I'm going to get down in there and I'm going to clean that all out. See all the crud coming out of there. So you can see it's a little bit cleaner now. Not as clean as I would like, but you know, you're getting, I'm just trying to give you the basic idea of what you need to do. We're gonna go ahead and clean this, these channels out, get any grease or accumulated carbon. 
See down in here, there's a lot of carbon built up in there. Go to town on that. Or you can use a wire brush. Give my wire brush attachment and go to town with it. Get in there and you know, brush that out. Get in there and you don't be, you're not gonna hurt anything. You know, just get that stuff loose. Like that. Another patch. Keep, and go at this as many times as you need to get it as clean as you like. But you know, you can see already that it's removed a bunch of that surface carbon. So I'm gonna go ahead and just wipe this down real quick and we'll reassemble it. But that's the kind of thing you, you know, that's how you're gonna clean these. You clean this off, just remove any contaminants. Okay. All right. But I usually spend a lot more time cleaning guns than this. So there's your bare bolt carrier. When they say bolt carrier group, that's what they're talking about. These pieces right there, that's the bolt carrier group. It's the carrier and the bolt. Can't quite see the whole okay, let's put it back together. pile of parts. Can you put them over to your right a little bit? Oh, did you lose me? You lost me. You can't hear me. What's that? Can you move all the parts that you're talking about, the bolt carrier group, over to the right uh -huh. just a few a few like inches so we can see them? Because where you're oh, I'm left sorry. hit. There you go. All right. So you got <laughs> your, yeah, you got your cotter pin, your cam pin, bolt carrier, and the bolt. Okay. Excellent. Thank yeah, you. Sorry about that. Oh yeah, no, no, I'm sorry. I'm uh, so I'm gonna put your bolt back in right here. Now this is a good place for a little bit of grease because this you'll feel it's a little bit tight. So there means you got some metal to metal contact there. A little bit of grease. And just rub that bolt, get it nice and, and then see it's a lot smoother now. You don't hear that metallic sound. So then you see here. There's a, uh, that hole lines up here. So you wanna make sure that that's lined up. If you try to put this back together without that lined up, you're just gonna struggle. So I'm gonna drop this cam piece back in there. I'm gonna do this where you can see. Sir. Wish I could tell a joke while I'm fumbling around on camera here. These are just weird angles for me to be working. I can unmute Lonnie and he can tell a joke. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he's, oh, a, yeah. he's a funny guy. <laughs> I was going to also mention uh, real quick, this uh, this hole in this thing is where the, the firing pin sliding through, just as a reference, if you're wondering why my cam bolt's got a hole in it and that corresponds with the hole in there I don't know if you see that hole in that channel anyway just for reference okay so that dropped right back in and then it has to rotate so that that hole will allow this pin to drop in so this pin now drops right back into there I don't know if you can see that it drops in there Push it down, you take your cotter pin, and that locks it all back together. It's gotta go down in there. This one's a little tight. So this is where I might have to use my brass brush. I mean, brass hammer. Notice that it leaves a little bit of a brass mark, but it doesn't mar the black there. Ah, come on. this out of there. That's what I get for going so fast. Oh, good. There we go. Sorry, you got time. I'm not, don't, yeah. don't hurry too much. <laughs> don't break your gun. Don't break your gun. They're expensive, yeah. I'm told. Oh yeah, well yeah, I've I've built a few of them. I I have spares. Uh, if you'll notice, I don't know if you noticed on this one, but it's an eighty percent one that I milled out. Um, 
I'd love to love to show people how to do that too. Well, yeah, anyway, I'll get I'll I'll put that back together in a minute. But um, yeah, this here's a ghost gun. Well, we won't tell the ATF. No, no. Well, it's perfectly legal. Uh, that's a uh, joke. <laughs> I know. I know. I wouldn't. You wouldn't rat me out anyway. Uh, anyway, well, that's that's the that's cleaning and disassembling and reassembling an AR bolt. Um, if are there any questions about that stuff, I'd be happy right. to go over any of it. Um, uh, uh, you know, Brian, I'm gonna unmute you. You can go ahead and ask that question yourself. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah. Hey, yeah. okay, hi guys. Um, just real quick, um, do you always recommend taking apart the BCG like that every time you uh, clean it, or can you just leave the whole thing the entire assembly together and clean it as a world assembly. Well, if I'm going to clean the gun, I'm going to take the bolt carrier out and clean it. Uh, but if like I am out, say shooting in, in a situation where things got wet, uh, I might just run a couple of patches down the barrel to prevent, you know, the barrel from rusting and wipe stuff down. But uh, just for a quick, um, you know, situation like that, I wouldn't do it. But if I'm going to clean the gun, I'm going to pull the bolt carrier out, just clean it, take it apart, and uh, put it all back together. Eve, if you want to ask your question, go ahead. Oh, oh sorry. I, oh, I pushed the wrong okay. button. My bad. Pushed the wrong button. No, that's good. Can I? <laughs> yep. Okay. Go for it. So there's. It's all back together again, but there's a part in the bolt carrier group. Can you hear me? Yep. Yep. Okay. There's a part in the bolt carrier group um, and it has some thin metal gasket type rings. Oh yeah. I'll take that. I'll show you right here. Yeah. Gas um, rings. Yeah, maybe that's it. The, the cuts are staggered and I don't know if the orientation matters. No, it does not. There's, there's a lot of that. You're talking about these gas rings right here. Yes. Thank you. That's it. Yeah, there's, uh, I think, three of them in there. And she's asking whether this gap needs to be staggered with that gap and that gap. And uh, no, it doesn't make any difference. I've known people that have aligned them all and put the gun back together just to see what would happen and it had no effect. Uh, you do want to check these for wear. You know, the, these are a wear part. Um, they, I have yet to wear one out, but they theoretically can wear out but I know the gun will run with one or two of those missing as well. So it's, you know, if you're out in the field, you're cleaning your gun and you notice a gas ring missing, if the gun's still functioning, just run it. It's not gonna, not gonna hurt anything. Uh, it just may not, you know, uh, run quite as reliably because the, you know, the gas system may be a little bit compromised, but yeah, those are called gas rings. All right, is there any other questions? Uh, I can unmute you. Uh, you can ask questions in the, uh in the chat. I'm going to say going once. Going twice. Oh, yes. David says, yes, you have a question or David says, yes, we can. Un I'll unmute you, David. Go for it. Better on going back to the pistol disassembly. Yeah. Is it better to apply grease to the rails on the frame or on the slide? Because I've always done the rails on the frame. Is that six of one, half a dozen of the other? I really don't think it matters as long as the grease finds the, the, the surfaces that rub together. Um, I, I can't see a reason why it would make a difference. Um, you know, it's, it's just a metal on metal surface and that grease will thin out as the gun gets hot and it will uh, find its way to where it needs to go. So I don't think you're wrong. Thanks. All right. Anyone else? So I think we're clocking in at right at right at one hour. All right. Which is outstanding, and it sounds like there's enough interest, uh, Scott, to okay. maybe do a a follow up to. Yeah. Do, anytime. Do and the revolver. It, yeah, yeah. Well, we can do a revolver. I have. I can do both a single action and double action. I have one of each. And uh, going to go through cleaning those. Oh, one thing I was going to mention, I forgot to mention, and, I, and it's really important. That is screwdrivers when working on guns. Get hollow ground screwdrivers. They look like this. This is not a hollow ground screwdriver. It's just kind of a wedge. <coughs> Excuse me. Get hollow ground screwdrivers and get the screwdriver bit that fits the screw, the width that you're working with. Don't 
these will mar and destroy gun screws. It's more important on older guns and you'll, you can really mar and ruin a, a nice historical old screw taking a cheap Harbor Freight screwdriver to it. Go to Brownells, bite the bullet. You can just buy the tips. You don't have to buy the whole screwdriver set, but buy a set of these or a, a set of Grace screwdrivers, gunsmithing screwdrivers, and um, your gun will thank you. Yeah, it's uh, one of the things that was, I think I mentioned earlier, folks have asked for, if you get like a, a nice shopping list. Yeah, um, I'm going to go ahead and put one together and I will publish it or I'll send it to you, Ed, and you can distribute it how you wish. I will probably just post it online wherever this, all this is going to go. Uh, okay. But thank you so much. Uh, this has been awesome. I'm going to unmute everybody so they can all clap in a moment. Uh, I am going to take the video once it's processed, okay. download it, maybe edit it, and put an apology in the front for me screwing up okay. the start of the recording, and well, put it on our YouTube channel. Okay. Uh, unless people are really objecting to that, in which case I will make sure that uh, I edit out any names yeah. or faces. But in general, you guys have been pretty quiet, and uh, we can take the Q&A out if necessary. But yeah. It, it's been awesome. And feel free to, to private message me if you have a question uh, about any of this stuff or, or cleaning or, you know, oh, I was going to tell you real quick too, on, on guns with wood, just take a little bit of rim oil or a little bit of gun oil on a, on a cloth and just give it a light coat and put it in the safe. That's all you need to do to it. I'd all love right. to, I personally would love to see revolvers in that lever gun next time. Yeah, so we'll, we'll do. will figure that out. Will do. Uh, all right. Well, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to go ahead and unmute everyone so you guys can all express your appreciation. Yay. Thank you. Yay! Thank you. Thanks, Scott. Thank well you. done, Scott. Excellent. Very generous. All right. Well, thank All you right. again, and hopefully uh, I didn't screw up bad enough that you might show up the next time I do something stupid on. <laughs> hey, hey, add a lock picking class. Lock picking. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So thanks, Jake. I'm gonna have to edit that out now. Thank you. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, All right. Any well. questions? Any questions? Tag us on Discord. Tag us on Facebook. Tag us on the forums. You know how to find us. All right. Thank you all. Good thank night. you, folks. Have a great night. Scott, great job. All right. Thank, thank you. Good. We'll talk to you soon.